Okay, so in this video, I'm going to show you a really quick and easy way to use AWS CodeStar to quickly develop and build out a CI CD pipeline uh, and deploy an ASP.NET Core MVC uh, web application. Uh, this is what I found to be one of the easiest ways to do it. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, so we're, the first thing we're going to do is we're, we're going to go into the AWS CodeStar service, and you can get to that from the uh, console itself and by typing in CodeStar, and it's the easiest way uh, to, to get there. Um, and if here, we're going to actually create, create the project. Uh, so we're going to create the project, and uh, this is going to do a number of things for us. First off, it's going to allow us to choose uh, from an existing template. Uh, and and you kind of, these templates are kind of, uh, there's a lot of them out there. You can do Lambda templates. Um, you can do it for different languages, obviously. And uh, what you can do is search for the one you want, and then it's going to kind of help us walk us through building out a complete CI CD pipeline, including deploying things to, including a deployment, obviously, but also setting up a repository so that we can actually do get check ins and, and pulls and clones of, of the code and so forth. Uh, so, which is, which is good because then obviously we're doing, we're not usually doing these applications um, individually, they're just typically done in a team environment. And a CI CD pipeline allows us to automate as much of this as possible. Uh, so CodeStar is a really nice kind of way to get going. Uh, so what I'm going to do, since we're going to be using ASP.NET Core, uh, I want to go ahead and pick C Sharp. So I'm going to pick down here from the templates, and I'm just going to filter on C Sharp templates. And as you can see, there's a lot of other services and, and application types that you can pick. But since we're focused on, C, on, on .NET, uh, we're going to pick C Sharp. Uh, so there's two options once you, ch once you filter on C Sharp. You've got ASP.NET Core. Web application and you got web service. Uh, so we're going to do a web app because we want this to be a, a, a functioning web application. Uh, so we're going to do that, and then it's going to actually going to deploy it on an EC2 instance. So it's going to handle all of that provisioning as, as part of the part of uh, what this um, project will do. So we'll select next. Uh, we'll give it a project name. We'll say my great web app. Right, and give it a project name, and it's going to go ahead and create uh, a repository for us to put the code out. So you can either use code commit, uh, which is a a AWS's version of a Git repository, or you can use GitHub. Uh, if you want. I'm going to use code commit uh, just because it's kind of nice and easy, pretty easy to use, um, and we'll just go with that one. I'm going to go ahead and pick the defaults here. You can obviously decide again. This is a, going to be deploying to an EC2 instance. You can pick which instance you want this to be deployed to. Uh, we're, for our purposes, we're just going to use this T2 micro, which is kind of a simple one. It's enough for what we're trying to do. And we're going to deploy it to our default VPC. If you had other uh, VPCs, you would check that here in specific subnets. If you needed this to have public access or private, uh, be privately <clears throat> uh, provisioned, you can do that as well. Uh, most important thing here is make sure you pick a key pair. Again, this key pair is what was used to uh, provide credentials to the, the instance that's getting created. So if you don't have a key pair you're going to create one ahead of time uh, just make sure you have one uh, or choose one that you know where it is uh, i'm just going to pick one that i know i have uh, if you don't do this <clears throat> then you won't be able to uh, shell in or sh into the instance this is eventually going to get deployed to a linux environment so we want to be able to shell into that later on to to do some sort of configuration or whatever you need to do from a, from a management side standpoint we want to do that uh, we'll go ahead and click next and we'll just confirm all the information here and click create project. Uh, now what that's going to do is going to do a number of things. It's going to set up the repository. It's going to set up a CI CD pipeline uh, and some other things. And it's going to take a little while. So we'll go ahead and let that thing roll. Uh, once it's done, we'll walk through and kind of show you the different options here. And then we'll show you how to then take uh, the sample application that they provide and replace it and, or make changes to it to match our application that we want to write. We'll do that next. All right, so once it's done, and it'll again, it'll take a few minutes for that to go through. Uh, we have access to a number of things here which we'll walk through. Is obviously on the overview, you can kind of see some of the details and some of the resources and what it created. And again, just like anything else, um, there's really no fee or charge specifically for CoStar, but you are charged for the specific services that you create underneath the covers. So anything that is created, you see two instances that are running, you're charged for that. So uh, at the end of the day, obviously, if you're doing these demos and um, Tutorials, you should obviously make sure you clean things up at the end, just so you don't charge. Um, 
So the IDE basically, we'll come back to this, but uh, we're going to be using uh, Visual Studio for our IDE. But if you're using Cloud9, they give you instructions on kind of how to set up those environments. Uh, but we're not going to use that. We're going to use a, a, different a different IDE, so we'll come back to that. I do want to show you the repository. Remember that this code start created a, uh, a code commit repository. Code commit is basically their Git, uh, AWS's Git um, repository. So you can save all your, your, your artifacts and code out there. Uh, so it set that up for, for us um, and, and gave it a name here. If I click on it, you can kind of see the details. This is everything that's currently in there. So it actually created a readme file. Uh, and it put a number of the of the files that are needed. This is one of the huge benefits of, of using something like CoStar is it does a lot of this heavy lifting and setting these up. It's If you're kind of going through this for the first time, uh, there's quite a bit that you kind of need to know. Um, so, you know, to me, I think it's easy to start with this and then you can kind of get familiar with what, hey, what does the app spec YAML do? What does the build spec YAML do? But they set all this for you so that uh, you have an application that works right out of the box. Um, also, if we go back to uh, CodeStar and kind of look at the um, go back in our project here and go back and look at this, uh, the other thing that you'll do is <clears throat> there is a CDI, CI, CD pipeline that's here. So the entire pipeline is set up. Um, so anytime code changes are made or pushed out to the uh, code commit repository, it's going to automatically kick off this pipeline. It's going to pull the code, it's going to build the code, and it's actually going to deploy it. Uh, in this case, this template uses AWS Cloud Formation, um, so it's going to deploy it to an EC2 or EC2 instance um, as well. So, as I mentioned, uh, it does create EC2 instances, and this template does. So, if I go back here and kind of look at the, um, uh, you know, look at the instance, there's um, <clears throat> this is the one that it created right here, in my web app. So, this is the one that's created uh, for us. So, this is part of that pipeline. Uh, you can kind of see that it's running on Amazon Linux, which is what we expect because that's who we, we selected. Um, and you can kind of see some of the other details. So it is, a, it is, a, it, is it actually is a provision EC2 instance that was set up. <clears throat> and again, you are charged for that. Uh, so that's part of it. So all our applications will be set up and, and um, the code will be pushed out and deployed to uh, that EC2 instance uh, using this pipeline. Uh, so again, here it is. Here's the pipeline. It creates a chain set. It executes it and deploys it out there. Um, so anytime code is changed, it's going to run through this. Now, this pipeline here is you know, <clears throat> uh, called is part of um, code pipeline. So you can you can actually um, change it, right? So you can add to it. You can make uh, you can make other changes. So if you want to add more steps, you uh, you are free to make whatever change you want to this pipeline to expand it. If you, you want to add more testing. If you want to do anything else with deployments and maybe change change some of the settings, um, you can do that all through this pipeline. Um, at the end of the day, uh, there's also a button up here that you can view the application. So if I click on it, there it is, it's running. So I have this application sitting out here on um, AWS, and uh, it, it's an, it is, in fact, a, a fully live website um, that we can then use now and try to modify it. So let's do that next. Okay, so here I am in my IDE. Again, we're using Visual Studio 2019. And uh, this is basically, I just installed this from, from the website, Microsoft website, uh, for installing Visual Studio 2019 Community Edition. Very easy to do. Just make sure when you install it that you, that you choose uh, the option for, um, for the language and for the platform you're, you're going to be using. In our case, I, uh, just make sure you install .NET Core um, as part of that installation. I'm not going to spend the energy showing you that. I kind of assume you already know how to do that, or you can watch one of the other videos to show you how to do that. The only other thing I will mention is that we have also installed uh, the AWS extension here. So if I type in AWS, um, they have a, they have a toolkit. So just make sure you install that. I already have it installed on my on this platform. Uh, that will give you access to the AWS uh, toolkit, um, as well as giving you access to some other built-in. Uh, extensions inside ID. So that gives us this AWS Explorer that you can kind of see all the resources uh, again. All right, so now what we want to do is we want to take, um, CodeStar created that repository for us out on uh, code commit. Okay, so we saw that, it created that. So let's go ahead and see if we can connect and get the code down so we can make changes to it. So we're going to go over to uh, Team Explorer and we're going to then see the option here for manage connections. Uh, you're going to select AWS code commit and you're going to want to um, click clone. 
All right now when you click, click clone and assuming you have everything set up correctly if you if you aren't if you're having issues with security you want to resolve that first remember you have to set up the access keys uh, for the account um, and I've kind of already done that in this instance. That's why I was able to get to the repository. So if everything's working correctly, you should see a list of all of the, the repositories that, that are out under code commit under your account. Uh, here's the code commit repository that, that CodeStar created for us. And I want to go ahead and clone that locally. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. And you can get a location of where you want to go to. I'm just going to pick the defaults and click go. Now, what it's going to do is it's going to tell me that we need to have Git credentials, all right? So, so you you will need to have uh, created Git credentials through AWS in order to pull down and log in, um, in order to do the Git pull of or the Git clone of, of the repository. Uh, so, let's go ahead and do that next. Okay, so here I am now back in the I I am um, console window here. And I'm going to make up a couple changes. So I'm on my specific uh, user that I created. And you'll kind of notice a couple things here is that uh, CoStar went ahead and created uh, some additional policies for us. So this, these are policies that are needed to run CoStar uh, for application. Um, and also, I happen to have administrator access as well as uh, I have access to Elastic Beanstalk that. Um, you may or may not need, depending on what you're trying to do. The thing we need to do for having access to code commit uh, is we need to go to security credentials, and we need to come down here and uh, generate um, get credentials for AWS code commit. So we're going to do that here. So I'm going to click generate credentials, and it's going to go ahead and give me a username and a password. We want to go ahead and download those because uh, we'll need to add those and put those into um, Visual Studio. So we'll go ahead and save that. And we'll close that out. So we now have get credentials uh, that we can then use to, to pull to do a get clone uh, of our, our repository for our application. So let's go ahead back into Visual Studio and let's uh, check that out next. All right, so here we are. I'm back to Visual Studio. Uh, so you have the option uh, to either have Visual Studio try to create the credentials for you, but since we did that by hand, let's click no here. And then here we'll actually go ahead and plug in the username and password that we downloaded. So go back to that, go back to that file that we got the access keys file, and go ahead and paste in the code commit the code commit username and the, the password that you received. All right, let's go ahead and save OK there. And then it went ahead if the credentials are fine, which it should be since I just created it, it's going to go ahead and clone that repository, repository down. So now if I go over to Solution Explorer, I can see here is that application. Here is the entire solution for my, my web application. Uh, it also created a, a test uh, application to go with it. So if we wanted to do automated testing, which is a good idea to do as part of the CI CD pipeline. Uh, but here is my web application, fully fully working, fully functioning. Um, if I wanted to, I can run this locally. Uh, let's go ahead and click this and click uh, Chrome. Let's run it. So control five. Let's let it compile. So it's going to build locally for me, and everything looks good. I should see my website. So there it is. There's my functioning website. Everything looks good locally. All right, I know it's local because I see the local host there. So we think the application was completely cloned correctly. And now I'm, I'm ready to make whatever changes I want to make and push it back into my CI CD pipeline that was created. So let's do that next. Let's make a quick change here. I'm going to go into the views and go to the home page and just make a quick little change here. I'm going to change the app uh, to <clears throat> my. Web app. All right, and I'll just make one more change here. All right, make two changes so we can kind of see that. All right, so again, if you will, we'll go ahead and save those locally, and we'll then push those back out to the repository. So there's my change. Uh, so I'm going to say uh, small change. All right, and I'll go ahead and commit that locally. 
Uh, and then once I'm committed locally, I'll go ahead and push that back out to code commit. Um, so that's going to be, there's pushing it. So it took those objects out and it went ahead and pushed it back out to code commit. If I go over to my pipeline, if I go back into Visual Studio, I'll be able to um, switch back to uh, code star and jump into my project. And I should be able to see the pipeline uh, in progress. So flip over there. There's my pipeline. And there you go. So this is the pipeline running. So it actually go had already once I once I made that change, it went ahead and pulled it. So that's saying that it actually did successfully pull the code. All right. Now it's in the process of building that. Once it's done building, it's going to go ahead and do the full deploy. So let's let's go ahead and wait for that to happen, and then we'll test out to see if our change is there. Okay. Uh, so it looks like uh, if you wait a little bit. Everything should be deployed. Everything is green and succeeded all the way down. So that entire pipeline is, is completed. So if I go back into view application again, um, we should see my changes. Uh, so let's go ahead and see. There it is. My great web app is up there. Um, and let's see where the other changes. I made one other change, I thought. Uh, where are you? Uh, let's see. I think I changed. Yep, there it is. So the change is actually in the link at the bottom there. It should say at the bottom, this is a great web website. So it's actually part of the link itself. Um, so it did work. Uh, I did have make my changes. So now you have a fully functioning uh, CICD pipeline that you can then use to completely change uh, your your application. So you can completely change this application the way you need to. And you have uh, a, a template that actually works. Uh, and you can extend as you need. OK. And with that, uh, the only thing I'll say is just make sure when you, before you're done that you go back in and clean things up. Uh, so let's go back to projects here, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and delete that. All right, that's going to go off, and it's going to delete the corresponding services. Just make sure you delete the resources with it. Uh, the one thing it will not delete, uh, not that it matters, and it's probably a good thing, is it will keep your code out there. So if you went into uh, code commit, uh, your repository, uh, is still there and you can decide if you want to delete that or not i'll go ahead and delete it just so that it doesn't stick around click delete on that one so that'll, that'll go away so everything that should be uh being cleaned up um and you should probably go in and also clean up some of the roles that were created through iam that's another thing, thing too but you don't get charged for those so the most important thing is to make sure that you clean up the ec2 instances uh, we should start to see those um, going away. There it is. That one's getting kind of deprovisioned, if you will. So everything looks like it's cleaned up. With that, we'll stop. Thanks so much.